Hi, this is Dan. This is the second part of our first week. And I'd like to talk with you about the uh, way media have changed in the current world. You heard some history before. Now let's talk about where we are. And we're going to look at something I think of as an ecosystem. So let's start in. Here is this media 3.0 thing that I think we're in. And it's marvelous. It's multi-directional flow. We're still trying to figure that out. And the key thing to remember is it's about access and not distribution. In the past, recall, we would create media and we would uh, distribute it. We would put it in trucks after manufacturing it if it was print, or we would make a broadcast and send it out over the airwaves or later cable and satellite. But now what we do is we make stuff and we put it online and other people come and get it. That's a very different uh, kind of system from the past. The consumers are becoming creators and the creators are becoming collaborators. Very exciting change. And in this change, we have enormous supply of media, incredibly large supply. And the lines of what we thought of as journalism in the past uh, have blurred. I like to think of the question to ask, what is journalism? Not who is a journalist, because so many of us are capable of doing acts of journalism. So let's look at a couple of examples where it's really clear what is and what isn't. This is journalism. We know this. It's the New York Times. They're not always right. They do screw up, but in general, they get it right. And they have processes in place. This is not. I have nothing against this blog. It's not my favorite kind of thing, but it's not journalism. Then we look at the BBC. A football match without any fans. Strict rules restricting public gathering. Clearly journalism, some of the best broadcast journalism in the world. Then we have... Not journalism. Nat and Foxy, uh, you know... It's great that some friend of Nat and Foxy's made this bad video of their bad dancing and put it on YouTube, but it's not journalism. That's my only point. We get into very blurry areas with uh, pictures like this. This is a frame from a video taken in Tehran, Iran, after violence uh, in the wake of an election there a few years ago. This young woman named Nita was shot in the street, probably by a government sniper. And someone walking by with a mobile phone that had a camera in it, like all of our phones today, captured this heartbreaking sequence. And this is one of the pictures. This person who caught this sequence was committing an act of journalism, but was not a journalist. And then this. We all know what this is. It's the tsunami that hit Japan after the earthquake in 2011. It was the most photographed videoed event possibly in history. Again, done by people who are not journalists, but who were committing journalistic acts. The ability of people to create media easily is leading to a variety of new things. This is a blog that started out as a single solo blog by a guy named Josh Marshall, now a media company covering politics. It could not have happened this way in the past. It's things like Oakland Local, where people are reading and writing about their own community, both amateur and professional. It's in Singapore, where people are talking in ways that the government doesn't necessarily approve of. It's in Vermont, where people are talking over the front porch on the forum and telling each other the news of their neighborhood. It's the professor writing about paleoanthropology and it's something very different and new which is uh, the, the media that are being created by NGOs and advocates for certain things. Now they were doing reporting in the past creating uh, reports based on interviews, collecting documents, etc. Now, because of the internet, they have become their own media operations. Who does the best reporting on human rights in the whole world? It's not newspapers or broadcasters. It's Human Rights Watch. 
these people are doing something in the journalistic field, in the news ecosystem. WikiLeaks, again, whether you like it or hate it or somewhere in between, it's, as Time Magazine said here, could be as important a journalistic tool as the Freedom of Information Act. It hasn't been yet, but it's very important and in much the way other media that collect and disseminate information. It is journalistic in that sense. Part of what I'm getting at here is that it's not about or. It's not bloggers or journalists. It's and. It's journalists and bloggers. It's a world where the ecosystem is becoming immensely more diverse to good effect, I must say, for the most part, also to some troubling effect, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But here is that ecosystem, or one little slice of it. It's an enormous thing and getting more and more complex, and we have a lot to figure out in how it's going to work. So on to the next part uh, and uh, stick with us.